Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of Kerbal Atomics, which is being made by forum user Nearty. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a lovely new selection of nuclear thermal rockets for you to add to your ships, and who wouldn't want that? So let's just jump right on into the vehicle assembly building and have a gander at the currently four different engines added in by this mod and let's grab ourselves a mark one command pod for size comparison sake and then head down to the engine tab now we actually could type into the search bar kerbal atomics and the four engines would pop up but since there's only four and eh, man we'll just stick with the tab today and actually for additional comparison let's take a look at the lvn nerve and just slap that right on there to the command pod so that we can get a good look at between these stock game parts and these new lovely mods parts and look at the first engine the LV 100 Neptune trimodal atomic rocket motor quite the mouthful of a name but well worth it for such a beautiful engine if we just pop this on the bottom there you can see it is quite a bit taller than the standard nerve and uh, yeah it's just overall a much much more beautiful engine. Just look at the beautiful detailing on this thing. Absolutely gorgeous modeling, beautiful texturing, all just the splendid detail. I mean, even if you go up in there to this bit that's sort of shrouded off, you see all these pipes, etc. It's just very, very well made, which of course, I mean, you really should come to expect that from any mod made by Nearty. I don't think I've had any of uh, Nearty's mods yet disappoint me, and this one is certainly no exception and it is a just overall beautiful engine with some pretty impressive stats as well now it does have a built-in active radiator so if it does start getting overheated you can turn that on to help uh, cool things down a bit the alternator producing two electric charge per second while active as for the engine thrust etc the max thrust in vacuum is 69 kilonewtons and with a maximum engine ISP of 950 when in vacuum now as for its actual propellant it uses a custom resource added into the game of liquid hydrogen, which we'll talk more about in a little bit. But for now, the consumption rate is pretty high, of course, being a 101.506 per second maximum. And that is when just using liquid hydrogen. What's really fun about this one and uh, two of the other engines in here is that if you so desire and you have oxidizer on your ship, you can actually inject oxidizer into the engine to add additional thrust at the cost of specific impulse. So if you inject 5.078 oxidizer per second, you can make the maximum thrust go from 67 kilonewtons in vacuum to 160 when in vacuum. But of course, the ISP will lower down from 950 max in vacuum down to 530. And in the process, you also use less liquid hydrogen at 76 roughly per second max. It's a very cool feature. I do quite like it. But again, yes, if you inject oxidizer, you're going to gain more thrust, but lose specific impulse. So you'll just have to balance that out for your current needs. And then, of course, the typical generator from the alternator above and gimbling of three degrees. Now, this is the LV100. Very good, beautiful 1.25 size meter engine. Now... We also do have another 1.25 meter size engine in the form of the Stubber or LVN50 Stubber Augmented Atomic Rocket Mo. I think that's supposed to be motor, but I have a feeling Near T ran out of space. Maybe, um, maybe make the name smaller. Just, just a suggestion. <laughs> And there we go, the stubber there, uh, quite a bit shorter than the nerve, as you can see right here. Let's actually put it side by side. And of course, way shorter than the LV100 that we had up here. But overall, a very nice little engine. Its stats are, let's actually make sure I'm on the right one. Yes, the stubber. It is a maximum thrust in vacuum of 152.5 kilonewtons, maximum ISP of 500 in vacuum, and consuming... Oh, I'm actually looking at the liquid, or liquid hydrogen and oxidizer one. 
hold a moment. Let's look at this one first, because if this is the purely liquid hydrogen one, I didn't notice that these two were switched from where we had them in the other. So, for the purely liquid hydrogen, maximum thrust of 60 kilonewtons, maximum ISP of 750, at 115 per second liquid hydrogen. Inject 5 per second oxidizer, and that thrust goes up to 152 kilonewtons, and the ISP goes down to 500. And you'll only be using 76, roughly, liquid hydrogen. So overall, a very interesting engine. It does also have gimbling, but interestingly, no alternator on it, so you won't be producing any electrical charge. Now that is it for the 1.25 size engine, so let's move on to the 2.5. And the first is the LVN500 Poseidon Trimodal Atomic Rocket Mo, once again, near T, shorten your names, maybe, it might be a good, good little idea. And boom, 2.5 meter nuclear engine. Again, beautiful, beautiful design to this thing. And actually has a bit of an animation. Can I show it in here? I don't know if I can. But uh, once you do activate the engine, uh, this part of the engine kind of lowers down a bit. I'll show it off in a moment when we're actually outside testing these things. And overall, just a very, very beautiful engine. This one does have the active radiator, ooh, which also the stubber did not have, so that's another thing compared to the LV100 that it didn't have. But the Poseidon does indeed have the active radiator. Alternator at 10 electric charge per second. Now, as for the engine stats, this one will produce a whopping 310 maximum kilonewtons of thrust in vacuum, with maximum vacuum ISP of 9 to 5. For consuming, <laughs> 482 liquid hydrogen per second maximum. Now you inject some oxidizer into that and you're going to get up to 775 kilonewtons of thrust but down to 540 engine ISP in vacuum. And that's for 362 liquid hydrogen and 24 oxidizer. Now it does have the generator and four degrees of gimbling range. And again, just overall a really, truly, truly beautiful engine and massive compared to the the little tiny nerve. But there we go. Now the last engine we have is the LVNGE Liberator Atomic Rocket Motor and this baby. Ha 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 ha. Oh yeah, look at that. That is just gorgeous. I really do love the look of this engine, and it's quite powerful as well. Now, this one does not have the oxidizer injection that the other three engines do, but it doesn't need it. It has a maximum thrust in vacuum of 820 kilonewtons, engine ISP of 1625 in vacuum, but will use a massive 726 per second liquid hydrogen whole lot of fuel for this thing, but my god, it goes quite well with four degrees of gimbling range. Always handy to have. Now, as for the fuel of liquid hydrogen, let's actually lose these engines and uh, talk about that momentarily. Now, these are, of course, a cryogenic fuel, so it needs special containers. So the mod maker has put into it as well a lovely selection of fuel tanks, which will start from the top. We're not going to talk much about these. I'm really just going to plop them on here so you can see. And they're just different sizes, shapes, and designs of uh, different liquid hydrogen storage units ranging from 1.25 meters in size to a variety of radial tanks, which if we pop that one there, we're going to need to zoom out. There we go. Got a much smaller one right here. Lovely. This one here, an even smaller radial tank. Now this one, it looks like it'd be a radial tank, but it's not. It's just a gigantic, gigantic tank. Holy crap, look at that thing. It is huge, but holds a whole lot of liquid hydrogen. Now, of course, we have another hydrogen tank there, a longer one there, and a stubbier one there. And then, oh god, we have more. All right, let's check these. <laughs> and then go for the big boys at the three point, uh, oh, what's that size? 3.75 meters. There we go, pop that on. And then finally, that one. So a lovely different selection of a whole lot of uh, 
beautiful looking fuel tanks all designed for holding liquid hydrogen. Now what makes them special is that they use electricity. Now you can actually grab, say, a regular fuel tank, say the FL2T or FLT200 rather, and you can actually take this and the mod maker has included into here, oh, what's that mod called? Part B9 part switcher, I think it is, that allows you to change the type of tank that you have here. And so you can actually turn this to liquid hydrogen. But the problem is, is that liquid hydrogen is a bit more volatile than the other substances we use. So even though this will hold 2000 liquid hydrogen, over time, that hydrogen will boil off. And so you actually slowly lose fuel. But with these tanks, now you can actually still switch them to other fuels if you so desire, but with liquid hydrogen installed, they and you turn it on, it will use a small amount of electricity to keep the liquid hydrogen in a good cryogenic state that it needs. So for a uh, fuel tank like this one, oh my god, this thing uses a lot of electricity to actually be able to hold all that liquid hydrogen together. And yeah, it's, it's quite an interesting little addition. I do like that. It gives you the option of using the stock tanks or other even modded tanks in the game to add in liquid hydrogen. But I like that those tanks, they're not designed for liquid hydrogen, so it will boil off and you'll lose fuel over time. Whereas these, for a small amount of electricity, it will keep that liquid hydrogen intact and you'll be good to go. Now you can actually turn off these tanks just in case you're running low on power, uh, which is good for this one because, again, this thing uses a lot of electricity. Uh, but yes, once you do turn it off, it'll start evaporating just like it would from one of these tanks. So let's show all of this uh, actually out in space and using these engines. Now that we've gone over uh, basically everything for these, we went over the forum engines and a variety of the tanks, just of different sizes, shapes, designs, all good. And here we have my lovely weird little ship now <laughs> to show you. Oh god, do I have them all turned on right now? Oh no, we're charging up. That's good. That's good. But yeah, if I actually turn this one on and enable the cooling, turn it back on, Oh yeah, look at my energy go down. It just, uh, that is using 55 electric charge per second. <laughs> I have, look at all those little RTGs. They're just surrounding this thing and that is not enough to power this large one. The smaller ones, sure, but not the big one. But yes, here is our monstrosity of a uh, ship for demonstration. Now we'll start with the LV-100. We then go to the Stubber, then we'll stage into the Poseidon, and then lastly, the Liberator. So let's uh, turn our SAS on so that we're aiming right toward prograde. And and what the hell, we'll throttle up. And there we have the lovely, lovely effects on this. Let's actually turn off the UI so we can get a better view. And yeah, it's just a beautiful, beautiful little design. I, I do, I like the particle effects. I like the coloring to it. All very nice and, uh, well, just pretty, basically. I don't know what other word to go and, and describe that for. But if we turn back on the UI and actually inject the oxidizer, it changes from an orangey flame that kind of tapers out to a blue than white. And yeah, that is us injecting the oxidizer and gaining some more thrust. Very fun to do. Now let's actually just throttle that down and pop it. There we go. Wait for us to kind of get away from it before turning on the next engine and... There we are. Again, you're going to see the similar sort of uh, particle effect here, including when we go and toggle on the inject oxidizer. Quite cool to have. I do really enjoy having that option. It's very nice. Uh, but there we go. That is that engine. Let's uh, detach that. And yeah, we really need to wait for this thing to float away gently as we need to see that cool engine animation when we turn this on. Watch this engine. There we go, it extends outward, and beautiful. Then it turns on once that has extended all the way down, and I just enjoy that. You know me, I'm a sucker for animations. Let's inject the oxidizer. Boom, there we go, getting some good thrust out of this thing. Always nice to have. And then finally, let us go to 
the Liberator. Does this one have an animation on the engine? I do not remember. Oh no, oh no, it's going really slowly. Ah, screw it, just turn on the engine. And we've exploded things. Ah, yes, it does also extend out the uh, engine shroud a bit. And there we go, we have it on now, lovely. Now again, this one does not have the inject oxidizer, but you know what, it's just a fun little engine to have. I quite enjoy this thing. But yes, this is the Kerbal Atomics mod. Just a lovely little selection of nuclear engines, plus some cool cryogenic fuel tanks for you to enjoy. And yeah, if you would like to give this mod a try, definitely check out the link in the description, as always. And I'd say definitely go have some fun with it. These are some very fun fun and entertaining nuclear engines, and they're just well made. But that is going to be it for this episode, my friends. I hope you all have enjoyed, and of course that you do come back for the next, but until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one! <laughs>